Welcome to the Sports Card Talk Show. To the Sports Card Talk the Show. Sports Card Talk Show with Kevin Anderson and Lauren Walker, the, the Skull, Skull Brothers. Brothers. Welcome to the Sports Card Talk Show, uh, episode one seventy one, uh, Friday Night Lights. Tonight, tonight we have Dan at Stand Up Displays, both on Instagram. You can find him on Instagram and on Etsy. Yep. So uh, I'm looking forward to uh, talking to him because I know that we're uh, trying to work out the details of an order here. So yeah, yeah. it'll be fun to uh, actually see all the options that he has available. Yeah, you know? he's got a lot on this uh, page, but kind of want to see what he can do. Yeah, pictures ours. pictures are worth a thousand words, but uh, honestly trying to, me and Kevin are finding out that unless we actually specify what we're looking for, we sometimes don't get what we actually want. So. Right, right. <laughs> um, and that was partially my fault. I uh, ran with something and uh, I really liked it. And then you started asking questions like you always do. Mm -hmm. like, All right, we'll <laughs> figure it out. But um, yeah, I had already bought some from him a while back. So uh, I'll put up a little pictures uh, of what I've already got. You know, I got uh, 35.1 touch holders, um, standard size top loader, mm -hmm. um, got SGC slab holder. And then uh, I think he said it was like a basic display. I didn't see it on the site anymore. So I'll have to see if he still makes those. But uh, it's just, it's actually really neat. And, and you'll see it in the pictures there. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think we better dial them up, huh? Ringling ding dong. All right, we got Dan on the line from Stand Up Displays. How are you doing today? Doing great. How are you guys? We're doing, doing good. Doing good, man. Yeah. Glad to have you on. Um, been uh, admiring your work, and, and uh, it was time to have you on, and we're glad you said yes. <laughs> no worries. I appreciate the opportunity, as always. Yeah. So um, we're going to start, because I, I see you got some Avalanche stuff back there, and you're obviously a collector as well. Um, why don't you talk a little bit about your collecting history and, and what brought you up to stand up to display stand up displays? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So you might notice a bit of an avalanche fan. We'll get to what's holding up the cards here. But um, way back in 1996, when the Nordiques became the avalanche and one Patrick Waugh was traded, I think even non hockey fans probably know about that trade. Mm -hmm. uh, it gave the Avalanche what they needed to go win the cup in their first year of existence. So from then on, I was absolutely hooked. I remember not having TV because we were moving. So I had to go over to my neighbor's house to tune into game four when they finished the sweep of the Panthers. So <laughs> the passion has stuck ever since. Um, like a lot of people, you know, you go off, you do college, you get married, you have kids, you're broke that whole time. So you're not <laughs> buying cards or anything. Right. Uh, I, I finally got back into collecting probably about five years ago now. Um, that really kind of shoehorned into this whole stand up displays thing that I'm doing now. Um, a buddy of mine growing up started a business where he was building and, and selling 3D printers and got me interested. So I figured, what the heck, give it a shot. And I got pretty good at that. And then I decided I wanted to display some cards. And you looked in the market, you know, there's the the clear plastic easel type displays. They're not very yeah. stable. I was like, well, th this isn't what I'm after. Let's give it a shot with a 3D printer. So that spawned the, the basic stand that I sell today. And once you make something, something for yourself with a 3D printer, you might as well make more. So I said, why not try to market this and, and see where it goes? So, so here we um, are. You're, you're from New York, right? I am, yeah. Are you born and bred in New York? Yes. Yep. Western okay, New so York, now in Eastern. Where? Uh, Western New York. So the you've probably heard of Corning, Corning Ware, Corning Insulation, and in, yep. uh, right near Corning. And now I'm uh, near Albany, New York. Okay. So so did you just grow up a Montreal fan then and follow Patrick Waugh? Or did you... Um, did you um, I mean, why not a Rangers or Islanders or Sabres fan? Yep. Actually, I was a Rangers fan. I still remember the 1994 cup win, yeah. but I think it was the logo or I don't recall that part, but you know, it was the new team, the trade, you know, there's a lot of buzz around them. Just got me hooked then and stayed with them ever since. Okay. <laughs> I, I grew up, I, I, I understand that. I'm, I grew up a, 
you know, a casual hockey fan. I grew up in North Dakota, so, you know, followed the the um, North Stars a little bit as a kid. Always, uh, but also played Super Mario, so was a Mario Lemieux fan. All right. my friends were uh, Edmonton Oilers fans because they, you know, the Oilers were, were the, the dynasty in the 80s, so everybody loved Gretzky. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I just I, I wanted to know why a New Yorker was uh, – going follow like so it wasn't that you were a montreal fan you no. were you but and I, I actually was an abs fan too i liked i liked the fact that they had uh wa and they had um um oh geez like joe Sack, peter forsberg Adam yeah ray, they had ray bork go to that team oh, yeah 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 there's a, just so many great guys you know wa and bork were all timers for the eighties and they were, they both got to win a cup with, with that abs team. Yeah. Yep. Back in, that was 2000, I think 2000, 2001, but yeah, I mean, I also, I grew up playing net. So, you know, while was the best goalie in the game, mm-hmm. might have something to do with it as well. Cool. cool. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. <laughs> yep. Awesome. So, um, so your desire to, to, um, display them a little bit kind of sparked this whole, Yep. This whole venture you're on. Yeah. It's uh it's been a lot of fun. And actually here I'll I'll do a little show and tell. Yeah. This is what kind I'm of make you it full screen here. What's oh sorry, full screen. I'll make you full screen so, this is what I, I call my basic stand. It has a slot in it specifically designed to hold whatever card you're trying to display. If it's in a PSA slab, I have a PSA design. Um that UP Ultra Pro brand, you know, 35.1 touches. There's a stand for yep. that. Top yep. loaders, et cetera. This one specifically is SGC. You know, they kind of came onto the scene a while back, but got a lot of popularity here recently during COVID because they stayed open. Yep. So SGC slides right in and it, it holds it at a nice display angle, but it's specifically designed to fit that, that slab. Um, from there, you know, one of the products that I'm really, really excited about um, that has been developed here in the last year is the Very Stand. So, you guys are probably familiar with Project 2020 from Tops. Oh yeah. The I don't even know what you'd call that. The phenomenon that it's turned into. Um, from the start, I don't know if many people thought much of it, but it was you know selling a thousand, two thousand cards per per run. And then you get to the, uh, the is it uh, Kevin Shore Griffey, where it sold yep. like 80, 100, I forget what the number was, but just it almost hit the 100,000 mark. Yeah. yeah. That one did. Yeah. And actually, I, I w- I, I'll give him a shout out. I traded some stands to him and he sent me a, a pretty cool, uh, it's actually a flyers uh, print that I have up on my oh. wall over here. Nice. Oh, nice. But, um, yeah. He's a great guy. I love his work. You know, it's certainly different than anything else, but. You know, he he got some great success from that card. But what it did to Tops was they couldn't source the Ultra Pro 130 point uh, cases anymore. Mm. So they were using whatever they could find. I mean, some of them were 180 point, so the card rattled around real bad. Ooh. But I I couldn't design a, a basic stand to fit Project 2020 with with a guarantee. Yeah. So, I developed this, the very stand, which you guys can customize on my, my Etsy store or shoot me a DM on Instagram or TikTok, and I'll collaborate with you guys to put your logo on it. I also sell them plain. But the whole purpose is, again, keeping in mind that Project 2020 was in, you know, probably 10 different style cases. This is adjustable. And not only is it adjustable, whatever the thickness of your card is, it's going to be displayed at that proper angle whether it's a thick card or a thin card. So this solved the problem where didn't matter what they shipped them in, it worked. That's cool. So it was the tops, you're giving tops 2020 the credit for, <laughs> for you coming up with this idea, huh? Yeah. I mean, that's the only time I've ever had to do a return on a product was because oh. it just, it did not fit. And it's no fault of, I, I shouldn't say it's no fault of mine, but it made me realize that there's, this is an issue and I can't confidently sell something to somebody unless I solve the issue. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I think it's just cool that, that, that <laughs> tops, 
I just thought you came up with the idea all on your own, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. You did, obviously, but it was tops 2020 cards that yeah, that caused that you to go into the lab and brainstorm that. Yep. And then the other thing too is uh, Beckett, the BGS slabs. Uh, yeah. I, I've got one here. I don't know. I won't show it, but they're two pieces. So it's a male and a female and they fit together. And I'm assuming it's like a hand operated press that they use. And if you've got, you know, an offensive lineman that's pulling the lever, they're really skinny. But if you've got the, you know, 150 pound person pulling the lever, they wind up fat. So it's really hard and frustrating to design to that thickness too. Again, the very stand doesn't matter. It's going to fit yeah. no matter what. Yeah. I think I remember even you, uh, I think you might've made a post about that even yep. uh, a, a while back. And I'm like, I did not know that it was different, yeah. you know? Yeah. You but PSA, the thickness. PSA is always the same thickness. SGC. Um, you guys are probably going to become familiar if you're not with CGC. Well, let me uh, make you full screen. Yeah, so CGC, these guys are newer to the the Pokemon okay. Magic game. Oh, okay. Um, not that I'm you know giving free rides, but these slabs are great. I mean, these things are super nice. I don't know what the market price is going to hold for them compared to PSA, but they seem to be doing a real nice job with their product. Yeah. So is these that are primarily in the gaming? Yeah, right now they just. I think they just announced that it's. So CGC is for their card games, and CGS I think is going to be out for sports. Oh, okay. All so right. interesting. It seems to be high quality stuff. We'll see what it does to the market and how their prices compare. Yeah, yeah. Have you had anybody hit you up for? Uh, I, I know they slab comic books and stuff like that. You are you making comic book stands yet? <laughs> uh, yes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, that's another another thing I wish I had for show and tell. But basically, picture the very stand I, I showed you. I, it's infinitely modifiable. That's the beauty of three D printing. If you yeah. have an idea, usually within a couple hours you're looking at a prototype. So um, I had a customer reach out to me about a comic book one and they're, they're out there. I just got to, you know, either clone myself or find <laughs> more than 24 hours in a day to get them to market. Right. Nice. Oh man. That's awesome. Um, I know that uh, aside from the stands too, you make uh, uh, like uh, slab boxes too. What are I, am I saying that right? Is that the new, I don't know what's how you're marketing them under what. Yeah, so here you go. I, I'll, I'll jump off screen for a second. Okay. So here's another issue, right? So you got people doing um, card submissions to grading companies, and yep. you know they're they're dealing with God knows how many cards, and they're using shoe boxes or Amazon boxes because that's what everybody has these days. Right. Uh, what, what this is, and I don't actually have a card saver in it, but this is a, a box specifically sized to hold card savers. Oh, and okay. card savers don't fit in those, you know, the cardboard three row boxes that you will get on Amazon for sports cards. So, yeah. again, you know, somebody posed an issue. I said, I can design for that and we can label them. So you can say, you know, this row is my 45 day submission that one's the expedited one whatever you want on it yeah. and it helps, helps the submitter organize and you know keep track of what they're doing now we got to think of a problem for him to solve huh <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm here and ready to go but you know the very stand and the customization that i've done and it's it's not so much a problem but it's an opportunity there's a lot of breakers out there these days there's a lot of uh a lot of social media. I mean, we're talking on social media right now. So a lot of the people that are consuming this probably have their own page where they're showing off their collection, razzing cards, selling on eBay even. Um, or you're a, a big card shop and you want some kind of memorabilia or swag that has your brand on it. Yep. This, this product gets your brand, whatever you want, in the photo with the reason that people are there, the card. So if I'm scrolling on Instagram, I'm going to see card after card after card laying on the ground. But when I get to the one that's in a stand with a logo and it pops and it's easy to see, I think that's really going to drive a lot of attention to your page. That That's uh, one thing we were talking about before we got on the, uh, before we went live here, our 
went live in the studio, <laughs> um, started, we hit the record button was, uh, me and Kevin, um, want to put in an order with you. And, uh, just, you, you were telling us sometimes simple is, you know, s- keep it simple, stupid, I guess is <laughs> not, not that you called us up, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh <laughs> Uh, I keep the record. I didn't call you that. No, no, no. no. <laughs> but you are a wild. That's what it made me think. Oh. You know, keep it simple. You know, uh, yep. whenever you're you're putting out your yeah, nice clean design and yeah. yeah. And here we go. More more shout outs. But you know, something like Pole Kings. Oh yeah, a recognizable brand. They have a nice simple logo that they paste everywhere. I think they had it on a billboard. But oh, now. Wow. You get a, a nice big hit during a break. They snap a picture. Boom! There's the the logo. Or, you know, you've got the the coffee breakers, which are another big one on the scene right now. Yeah, their logo is a bit more uh, complicated. It has like a coffee cup and sports ball, like you know, footballs and stuff up above it. Yeah. But for this, and you'll if you tune into their breaks, these are everywhere. Yeah. This shows in nice bright colors with a nice black background. You know who hit the card and why you should go follow their page. Yep. So yeah, simple. I would say, you know, there's a lot of complex logos out there. There's a lot of great guys that are making really cool logos for people. Yep. But whenever I speak with them, I always say, Hey, is there, is there text in that logo that you'd like to show? Because I think the words are going to really retain in somebody's mind as they're scrolling yep. through your stuff. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I, we just talked about not doing, um, <laughs> sorry. I know he's laughing over there. Uh, I want to go back to, cause it's something we talked about before we started doing this and, and, you know, what led you into the 3d printing you had an interest before and, and why yeah. talk a little bit about that? Cause I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, going back to, let's see now it was sixth grade. So it's at middle school. I developed an affinity for it's now known as high powered model rocketry. So that's kind of what kept me busy through, um, let's see, middle school, high school, somewhat into college. Believe it or not, I, I met my now wife in high school, and she still dated the rocket nerd. <laughs> Maybe because I already, I also played hockey, but uh, she laughed when I said that. But um, it, it's a cool hobby. I, you know, STEM. Uh, what is it? Science, technology, engineering, and math is yep. a huge focus these days. They have academies popping up. Rocketry oh, yeah. is featured in almost every one of those. Uh, yeah. I attribute it to getting me into college, uh, honestly, because it gave me a focus and a desire to learn. And you know, at the peak of it, I was making my own rocket propellant. I had a metal lathe in my garage. I was turning up all the motor cases. They carried GPS and altimeters and deployed parachutes and were totally reusable. So it's it's developing into a really big hobby. I think it's spectacular for anybody to propel, literally, bad joke, propel them <laughs> into you know, curiosity, the desire to learn, and, and really. Sure. Minds. Yeah, I know I'll, several of the local high schools have our robotics teams and, yep. and that stuff. And uh, I remember um, going to one of my daughter's dance competitions when she was in dance, and it was in in a pioneer hall, they called it. Well, next door was the, um, the old deck arena and it was packed. And I'm like, what's going on over there? I walk over there. You now the deck holds probably four to 5,000 people full. And I'm like, what in the world? I didn't even know anything was going on. It was robotics championships. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, it was so cool. It's huge. And I guess I'll say another thing too. volunteer. If you have an interest, mm-hmm. those, well, these days it's a little different, but historically, yeah, yeah. um, volunteer if you have a desire to help they'll take anybody um my my really good friend that's also now into 3d printing his dad is a huge supporter of the local robotics team and they'll take you know if you know anything about turning a screwdriver they'll take you to help out and you know enrich the experience for the kids so i yeah. i just i think just because of how technology and engineering has really influenced my life i think it's great for anybody else to get involved yeah for sure so that kind of uh, just led to when he said 3D printing just kind of sparked your interest. and Exactly. Here we are, man. That's so cool. I, yes. I love the story. It's <laughs> been a ride. It's been a, a fun, fun ride. But I'm 
never stop learning is all I'm going to say. Just keep trying. I I tell my, my son this all the time on the way to hockey practice, just keep trying and have fun. This might get, this, this might cause you some trouble, but maybe it won't, but uh, (laughs) I was going to ask if you wanted to show it. (laughs) I actually, um, I got to show you this. Um, We won this in a giveaway and this, some guy, um, um, made this with the Greek, uh, 3D printer. I don't know if it's going to show up. That oh, one. is it a lithograph or lithophane? Oh, that's mm-hmm. cool. It, uh, it's a Mickey Mantle. Uh, I believe it's a Jim Min 10. Yeah, Jim Min 10 rookie. Yeah, Jim <laughs> 3D Min- printed. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, you know how many of those there are in the world? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Three? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, he, but I don't know if you, uh, I've ever even been asked to do anything like that, but he uh, said that now I'm going to be getting all these requests, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's, that's something it's another technology. I just, these days haven't really been able to experiment much because you know, uh, we're, I can't I, remember how many hours he said it took yeah. to do that or something like that. Do you have like a, a humongous printer that pops these things out or I mean, I, so I have six. So, oh, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> so 3D printing is linear, right? So if you were to go, say, injection mold plastic, it you can really expand your output quickly. 3D printing, the only way to scale is to add more printers. So I can print, like, of these on my printer, I can print eight of them, but eight of them takes about 11 hours. So... Um, and then there's another printer that does the the multi material, and you don't have to go full screen, but that does like the multi material. So this is all one piece; it's all attached. And that one's a different technology that takes a little bit longer to do all the switches and whatnot. So I know that you use like it's called filament, right? Is that what yep. it's called? It, it, it do you have, to have those. Wire. Do you have to have all three of those different colors loaded into it? Then I can do up to five in one. Five. Do your printers ever turn off? <laughs> uh, so I, I looking at the statistics, one of them I bought last, I think it was February. And that's like, what is that? It's like 330 days of mm-hmm. a lot of time. That printer has been running for 280 of them. Wow. Uh, 280 times 24. So it's, it's a lot. And these days, no, it's one after another, after another. Yeah. I, I, I hope I'm right on this, but I think uh, for a little while you um, switched to making some face shields to help out with uh, uh, yeah. the response, right? Yeah, that yeah, that was one of the most rewarding things I've ever yeah. done. And it's not me; it, it that was a huge community effort. So yeah, let's see if I can give some shout outs to people that aren't on Instagram. But for sure. So the, um, the printer company that I use is called Prusa. They're out of the Czech Republic. Um, they're the the originer or originator of that technology, and they've made it open source. They, at the beginning of COVID, developed a face shield design, and they made that open source so that anybody that had a 3D printer could go do it. Oh, wow. Um, so my wife and I, um, who was pregnant at the time, let's see, we just had our son in June. So this was yeah. around April, May. So she was pretty far along. We spent along with several friends. I think it was at the end of the day, it was 53 days straight printing face shields. Yeah, I remember that Uh, time. Going on Craigslist and, you know, hey, we need clear plastic for the shield. We need elastic. We need filament. Because at the time, people were buying up the plastic for 3D printers so fast, we couldn't get it on Amazon. Yeah. Um, We had funding. And in the end, my wife and I, uh, printed, built, and donated about 1,100. And then in total, our, our full group, I think, did about 3,500 total. Yeah, that's nice. awesome. Um, yeah. I just was told by one of the guys um, that started it, that's Adirondack Mountain Rescue, was the nonprofit that helped us fund and distribute these things. Um, we just found out, like, yesterday that some are still in use. So they're oh, wow. They're cleaning them, reusing them. And yeah. it was the most humbling and rewarding experience because, you know, how often can you say you probably saved a life or two? And that's right. just what we're good to do. Yeah, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah, I remember I wanted to talk to you about that too. I remember when you uh, you made, made a few posts. I'm like, that's just awesome. I, I, I mean, you made a comment or two. You know, I'm sure you get bombarded with stuff, and I'm like, that's so awesome. <laughs> that that was that was good. And like I said, there were so many people involved, but it was it was around the clock. And yeah, bless my wife's heart. She was <laughs> hard at it. You know, out out to here with our third boy. Yeah, good, good. Um, so we we tend to like to ask a couple of random questions, and then you know right. that kind of helps us, you know, wrap things up, and and uh, we'll give you another chance to tell people where to find you and and uh, and what the best way is. But um, I think we'll start with uh, well, we, we I, know I, you don't have any time, so we won't we won't ask you what you're watching. <laughs> you're probably watching your printers, but what's your favorite uh, drink of choice? Oh well, I'm in New York right near um, Massachusetts, a nice uh, double IPA unfiltered. Oh, okay. Have you ever heard of uh, Treehouse Brewing? Gosh, you know, there's so many, I'm not sure. We actually are in a hotbed too, believe it or not. Uh, oh, that's uh, me, but I'm, I'm wearing the shirt today. Oh, um, nice. <laughs> yeah, they're, they, you know, I, I'd like to compare myself to them, but I can't. They started in a garage, what, like three years ago? And now you know, they just expanded to a huge brewery. Uh, some of the best beers you'll ever have. It's like two hours away, but with kids, I just haven't had a chance to go. Right, right. They only sell we, the brewery. They don't need to distribute. People go to them. It's, they go to them. That's okay. awesome. We, you guys, for you, what's it going to be? Like, um, oh, what is it called? Three Floyds? Is that near you guys? I don't think I've heard of that, but Indiana, I, I'm probably off a bit. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're up in Northern Minnesota. Northern Minnesota. Um, okay. I'm trying to think of the name of the brewery. Down well, there's there. several, there's hoops brewing, which Got is pretty it. big. There's, um, but there's one that's actually, they actually did start, uh, there's just Ben, Pat, it. ben, ben Pat, Paddle. Ben, yeah, Paddle. ben Paddle brewing is up here. They have oh. their, main facility kind of the same thing castle oh, danger is that a yeah what? Vil Valkyrie distillery they make uh nice yeah there, it's there's so many up here that what's the place that i just went and had uh lunch with ian and nikki that's a that's a brewery too isn't it i can't remember if they're actually a brewery if they just sell for anybody but anyways yeah, <laughs> yeah, long story sure we have we have several up here too but that's, that's awesome that what's the know. big brick place with all the bars in it downtown and that's a humongous <laughs> brewery that they're not doing it anymore i don't think aren't they i don't know dude that's <laughs> what do. yeah oh, i always yeah. ask me these questions i'm like if you don't know don't ask that, me. that that's where my brain <laughs> doesn't work because I've been, I've been in there several times yeah and, fitkers uh, brew house yeah fitkers fitkers brewery yeah that's but awesome. anyways um not not big on the the beer the beer scene for me anymore those are uh 20 years ago for me gotcha. <laughs> got you by a few years i think <laughs> one, one question i wanted to ask you are you the kind of guy that if you're going to go out do, do you like a, a day of fishing or do you like to go to like a concert ah oh, man yeah, one or the I'll, other I'll, yeah, i've never gone fishing oh, oh wow <laughs> but uh let's see if i'm going to go out it's going to be with the family probably go somewhere like uh a sporting event or to the park and play um Love to go to a concert. I think the last concert we went to was, uh, let's see here, uh, Kings of Leon with oh, the, okay. uh, the Night Sweats, which yeah. if you ever get a chance to see them live, do not skip it. They're incredible. All right. All right. The wife and I had bought concert tickets at the beginning of all this, and we were holding out for dear hope that it was yep. going to happen, and it got canceled. <laughs> yeah. I think the ones that we had that ended up getting canceled were uh, Zach Brown Band. Oh yeah, I heard that's really good in person too. And, uh, Jack White from the White Stripes. Oh, sure. oh wow, yeah. yeah. Okay, I've seen them, but uh, it happens. Yeah, maybe things will uh, start taking a turn here. We can hope, right? I agree. Well, I am going to ask you because uh, my wife and I don't watch series all the way through, but we did just finish one. So, do you get any chance to watch any any? What's on your queue if you do get a chance to watch something? Uh, we just finished the Mandalorian. Yes. Oh, okay. Yep. We and, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but my wife keeps bugging me that we got to watch. Uh, is it Shit's Creek? Oh, I've, oh yeah. I've yeah. I've actually watched the first five seasons of that, and it's it's pretty good. I, I would suggest it. Cool. All right. Yeah, we can do that while we're gluing and packaging. Yeah. And right. All right. 
Oh man, that's good. That's good. Yeah, we uh we just finished the Mandalorian as well, and uh, we actually just finished Cobra Kai, which I wasn't sure what oh. I was going to think. And totally, totally good. I totally right, dude, love that list. That's awesome. I've got yeah. that. I've got that in my watch list, and I'm like, I I think it's very well done. I read a little article where they interview Lu- Daniel Larusso or whatever, and uh, he's like, you know, we kind of had low expectations. Not that we weren't doing good stuff, but we just, you know. Are people going to really want to watch this? And it's, it's so good. <laughs> good. Yeah, I'll check that out. Yeah, I, I yeah. for that too. Um, that sounds, sounds great. Well, why don't you take a minute and just kind of, you know, um, maybe you can go over what you're offering, the the sizes and, and, and where people can find you. And I'll make you full screen so you can show them off again one more time. Okay, great. Thank you. So, all right, guys. So the best way to reach me is on either Instagram or TikTok at standup displays. Pretty simple. Shoot me a DM. I try to be as responsive as I can. Typically, you know, a day max. But the main products we offer, the basic stands, go ahead and go to my my Instagram and then go to the link in my profile. Go right to my Etsy store. It'll tell you everything you need to know, need to know about the product with, you know, all the pictures and whatnot. The, the main product right now that we're doing and it's customizable is the very stand. As I said earlier, variable, so you can fit any cards you want. We can put your logo right there. It's a collaboration, so shoot me a DM on Instagram and with your logo, and we will go ahead and see what we can do. Uh, it's typically a you know five to ten day turnaround to get them in your hands, but we view it as the best way for breakers, collectors, or anybody to get their brand on the stand in the picture. So that everybody gets to see, you know, who's showing that awesome card off in their in their feed. Perfect. Yeah, I highly recommend you check out his page and and uh, and just check out what he's doing. I mean, just great stuff. Uh, and w- I know we'll be putting our order together here soon. <laughs> I, I actually got like got sidetracked there when you were showing the the very stand because I'm like started thinking about our order. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. So you're gonna be you're gonna be stuck on the phone with us for a couple minutes after this. But yeah, uh, well, yeah. I guess it's collaboration. I don't take money until we agree on a design, and it's something that you think is gonna improve your posting. So yeah, you have to lose. Let's talk about it. All right, awesome. Well, we want to thank you again for coming on. We'll wrap this up yes. and we'll stick on the line for one second. Uh, that'll bring episode 171 with Dan at Stand Up Displays to a close. Thank Skull you, guys. brothers.